The following program contains adult language, poor taste in jokes, racial slurs, political slurs, slants, and all sorts of things that if you are sensitive and have a delicate constitution, you should probably go watch Teletubbies. You were warned. I ain't drunk. I'm just drinking. But you're so high. Oh man, you know I ain't high. But you're so high. Yeah, well I just take a little sip every now and then. But you're so high. You all to be ashamed Stay of yourself. Drunk all oh, come on now, you all don't feel like that. Bam! Hey kids, welcome back. She came today. I told you in the video yesterday or the day before, whatever it was, that we were going to be doing kind of an experimental boat project. And it is here. It's the Genesis Hall. So I'm going to take the, the camera off of the mount and show you the, the full boat here. <clears throat> so here it is. Very, very cool ride. I like it. Um, I'll give you my first impressions here in a minute. But it is technically a catamaran. It's not a very wide catamaran. It actually has probably more characteristics of a V-Hull as far as width and balance goes than a true cat. My big gas-powered rock star, that is a catamaran, you know, big offshore racer. This is very, very narrow for a catamaran. I was very surprised. Shit, what was that? Huh. Oh, well, when it showed up, I was very surprised at how narrow it was in person. But um, very cool. So what we're going to do, I've been doing some reads on this haul. And uh, most of the guys are saying, yeah, anything above 55, 60, and it gets death wobble. And, you know, it's just, it's a very small haul. It's only 30, it's long. It's, what is that, 30-ish uh, inches long. But it's very narrow, which is tough to do. And the way that the stern is set up is uh, unique as well. But pretty, pretty cool. So... I'm going to, my goal is to get this up to about 70 and we'll see what happens. So let's go over the boat real quick. The reason I wanted this, and I would not consider this a go out and buy it radio control boat because it is very um, kit at best, okay? So it comes with the canopy, obviously, and it comes with a motor and some lines that are set up wrong. <laughs> but And the running hardware. And it's only about 200 and... What was this thing? 215. The reason I wanted this haul, my buddy Patrick down in Kentucky got one too, is because it's a reasonably small boat as far as weight goes, but it is fiberglass. And usually boats like this, and that's the only haul I'll run, they either have to be made of wood, and then you epoxy the shit out of them like the riggers that I build, which essentially is fiberglass, or they have to be laid up fiberglass. And that's what this is. For the money, very, very good haul. I was going to replace the motor, but the motor actually looks pretty decent. It's pretty impressive from looks. I haven't read anything bad about it, so that's a good thing. Um, so, yeah, very, very cool. You do need to supply your own ESC. You do need to supply your own servo and radio system. It comes with flotation, um, which I'm probably going to take out the two. I don't know if I can get these out. It comes with a stand, too, by the way. One of those little... Do I have one laying around here? Uh, I did. There it is. Here's one to a hydroplane that I have, but it's exactly the same stand. It's a total piece of shit. See that? Um, and it's only this big, and it's a very long boat. So uh, I'll be making a stand for this like I do for my riggers that's nice and stable and long. Um, but, yeah, very, very nice. The finish is beautiful on it. The fiberglass is thick. It's got a good hold to it. Uh, I'll be taking out the Sponson foam and just leaving the center um, because chances are good if this thing sinks, I don't want it back because that means it's probably shattered with the way we're going to set this up. Um, <clears throat> so I'll probably leave the center one in take the sides out. Uh, what we're going to – let's see. What, do I need to put anything else in? Water-cooled collar mount for the motor uh, looks like I think that's ABS it might be it almost looks like composite like fiberglass mount I'm not really sure uh, doesn't matter it seems to be pretty stable pretty hard um, I might reinforce their epoxy mount here with fiberglass we'll see if it tears out we know what happened um, but no big deal the e I bought a very massive oversized ESC for this 
and a massive oversized steering servo for this. They say in the description, this one came from Hobby King, but you can get them from Offshore Electric and you can get them from a different, bunch of different places. They say to use a 3kg servo for steering. Do not do that ever on a boat that goes above 30 miles an hour because the servo is not going to last. Um, so I bought the same thing. Hang on. Sorry about that, smoking hot wife interruption. So, um, I'm, we got the water-cooled mount, which is cool, but they hooked it up wrong. And uh, as far as lines go, and then the water-cooling jacket around the motor, obviously, is all good. They did use good lines. I will give them that, nice wide lines, which is good. Um, but yeah, it's all it's set up all like shit. The battery mount plates are nothing to get fancy about. I don't think I can get them out. I will not probably be using them, so we'll see. Um, what we're probably going to do is your shaft is going to be turning counterclockwise, right? So we're going to put unneeded torque twist on the right-hand side of the boat. So this battery on the left is actually going to go farther up, and this one's probably going to stay right in the center, and we're going to do some other mods too. So anyway, the servo, I think that's where I left off, and I'm putting in here the same thing I put in the steering for the cars. It is a 20 kg Metal Gear. Always, always, always use a Metal Gear servo in a boat for steering. There, there's a big misconception in boating, and, or when people are thinking about getting into radio control boats and things like that, is there is more torque involved believe it or not with getting a boat out of the water than there is a car because you're starting that prop from a static you're in mass which with a car you're just rolling forward there is a big difference uh, and that goes for steering not as much with steering um, but you still need it because when you're coming off of a jump of a wave or whatever get a decent servo uh, i get these off of amazon for like 20 bucks a pop they're not that expensive jesus the stand sucks hang on this crap wagon. Look at that. Damn, horrible. Um, so yeah, there's the servo we're going to be putting in it. We're also, it came with this mess of crap. A bunch of zip strips that suck. Um, there is your turn rod for your servo. Came with boat hatch tape, which I have loads of, which is cool though. Um, antenna tube, which is good. An antenna tube mount, that is mine, that came with it, we'll be using that later. That is another water exit. Get that out of there. So this is a heavy duty water exit, okay? And a bunch of wrenches and bullshit. Um, it came with a prop, which is absolutely horrible. Little plastic nylon piece of shit. It's actually really strong for a nylon prop and it does have a brass bushing in there. Um, I'm actually going to save it because you never know, I might do a 3D printed boat and need some cheap ass prop, but do not put that prop on anything with some torque because this is going to be a 6S, possibly an 8S setup eventually. Um, this is the running, the rudder, which came with a single pickup uh, water line, which is sad. I wish it had two and it's too long for what I want to do with this. Um, I will shorten this later in the year probably, but that's okay. We're also going to be putting in hatch latches all right this boat comes with this little knurled thing and it just sits on top like is this fiberglass too yeah it is um just sits on top and then they expect you to tape all the way around it to make it watertight that's really really gay um it's still probably going to leak no matter what you do because it's just the nature of the beast but i don't like my hatches held on with tape um, so we're going to do a little bit of rigging with that as well. I do wish they had a better method um, for latching these down, but that's okay. We'll fix it. We are going to be using an Octura X440 beryllium copper left-handed spinner, okay, or prop. Now, do not ever, 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 ever grind a beryllium prop or sharpen or balance or detongue one without using extra, extra care. You guys know me, I'm not the safest guy in the world. I don't wear gloves for anything, whatever, but beryllium will kill you in a dust form. So we'll do that in another video probably. Um, if I can get my fat hands in there, which I'm not really that fat, but uh, we're actually going to be using trims on the back of this boat. And uh, there's a reason for that. And it's very, those of you that know RC boats are probably thinking, 
you don't use adjustable trim tabs on a fucking cat. You use them on a V-Hole. This is true. But one of the things that I, there's two. One's going to go on each side like this. Uh-oh, I lost a thingy. Sadness filled the air. That's okay, I'll find it. Um, the reason I want to use these is because of counter-rotation of the hull and for extreme throttle because my uh, eventual goal with this is to try to make this as much a, an electric drag boat as I can because it's really set up well for it. It's got minimal hull uh, surface area on the bottom. It's nice and narrow. Bam, it's going to be sweet. So we're going to put those on. The ESC that we're putting in is 150 amp water-cooled OSE, which is offshore electronics or electrics, um, and it has a island cap set here. Water cooled this way, water cooled that way. Massive, massive. But the other thing that I did is my buddy Drew down south turned me on to these fans. And these fans are, uh, fuck me, I can't remember the name of them. Yeehaw? Yeah? I think they're called Yeah. Y-E-A-H. They are very, very high output 30 mil, 30 mil fans, like for a 3D printer. But they're really made for cooling RC car ESCs and cooling um, nitro engines and things like that. What I also did is I designed and 3D printed this little bracket. This bracket is going to go over the ESC like that. It's going to attach to it with double-sided super tape that we use, and it's going to get plugged into the 5 volts of the receiver. Ugh, I'm running now. Sorry, it's cold out here. And there you go. So this thing's going to be air-cooled, turbo air-cooled, and liquid-cooled. Very, very cool. Now, let's start this thing. Um, oh yeah, wait, we're not done. We're also going to be put in, putting in auto balers. Now what this is, is a one-way valve. There's a O-ring in there. Okay, this should come apart. Yeah. Always buy the ones that come apart, guys, because if this O-ring dries up and you need to replace it, now we can replace it. Okay. What these do is that little ball you see in there, it will push up against that seal when the water tries to get into the boat. This is going to be on the bottom hull of the boat. And then when you move forward, the ball by gravity and inertia is going to go that way and it's going to let any water that is in the boat escape. We're putting in two of these, I believe, because this is a catamaran. We have two wells, if you will. So we're gonna be doing that. Uh, what else are we putting in here? We're also gonna be putting in an underhull water pickup. And like I said before, these, uh, the, the rudder is a single pickup rudder. So you've only got one little inlet for juice coming in and that is it uh i like to separately cool my esc and separately cool my motor here's how it usually works usually your water intake comes in goes through the motor or whatever then goes to the esc then goes out the problem with that is once that water gets to the esc it's already warm the esc is probably more important to keep cool than just the motor realistically um so if I have no choice and I have to use a single pickup, what we will do, I will bring it to the ESC first, then to the motor, then out, but I never do that. I always put in two pickups. This is an underhaul pickup just because I don't want to piss around with the rudder. And what you do is you chop a hole in the bottom of the hull, you epoxy this guy in, and you put an, a line on there. See how it's reasonably flush? And then that line's gonna be your, your secondary in. So that's really cool. Let's see what else we put on here. There's our other auto baler. Got two of those. Got a Y splitter, which I don't think I need. Um, oh, I forgot I ordered gas filters, nitro filters. Okay, sweet. That's not for this project though. Um, so yeah, let's get on it and let's do first things first. Let's install our ESC. That's the easiest thing to do. What I'm going to do is simply stick it on there with double-sided tape. <laughs> it's really pretty straightforward. Um, the double-sided tape that we use for quads, if you guys watch my channel, you know what I'm talking about because I use this shit for everything. If you want to stick your kids to the ceiling with it, it works really, really good. Where's my razor blade? Okay. But this stuff is reasonably waterproof and people-proof. I mean, it's, it's a bitch to get off. So what we're going to do we're going to look at our ESC. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off and we're going to wire series 
uh, XT90s on here because it's easier to solder outside of the boat than it is on the inside of the boat. And we'll stick this on, stick this on. I'm gonna go ahead and solder this up because we're gonna run series. We're gonna run a 3S over here and a 3S over here, or someday a 4S over here, a 4S over here in series, and that's gonna double. So you're, if you have a three and a three, you're gonna get a six. Uh, I'll explain why I do that. The reason, you could just run one battery that's a 6S and stick it in one side. The problem is balance now. Um, it tends to list your hull and your amp draw on a boat is extreme, okay? And that battery is gonna get really, really hot. So it's better to split the draw into two batteries in series than one battery or even two batteries in parallel. Well, two batteries in parallel will still split that draw. So let me go ahead and solder this up real quick and I will be right back. All right, and we're back. So bam, there we go, XT90s wired in series. Now, I did not show you that on camera because honestly, it's just a pain in the ass. I do not use a soldering iron for XT90s and this thick ass gauge wire. I use a soldering gun. This is 1300 or 100 watt which even then takes forever. Uh, yeah, okay, so what we do is we take the positive of our ESC, bring it to the positive side of an XT90. Then you join the negative side of that XT90 to the positive side of this XT90, and then the negative side of the ESC to the negative side, and that will give you series. Now, I did not use electrical tape. This is my super silly silicon crazy tape that I use that sticks to itself. Remember this stuff? I use it on quads. The reason I use that, um, it's not really to make it waterproof because it's still not, as you can see, uh, but it sticks to itself without any glue. Therefore, it will not come unwrapped. Electrical tape will. Now, realistically, what I would have done, but I'm out, is use marine, um, heat shrink tubing that I used to use. I used to have tons of it, and I still do, but I don't have enough big stuff. Uh, and it's got like a glue inside, and that's what I would have done. I would have heat shrinked that around, and perfect. And I also, where's my juice? Conformal coated them before I wrapped them. Do you have to? Not really, it's just habit. Um, so yeah, that's it, we're done. So that's gonna go into our ESC, for our throttle, obviously. I'm sorry, to our receiver. And this is the extra cap pack that we're gonna put on there. So, what we're gonna do now, I want this weight forward like that, okay? So, we gotta think about what we're going to do, and I'll probably just mount the caps to the center plate right there. Bam, just like that, Not about a peanut, okay? And our motors obviously are gonna go right there. Let's just make sure that we've got enough room. Now, the rudder pickup is probably going to have more uh, flow than the underhaul, I'm assuming. So I'm going to use that for this, okay? So we're going to see, they gave us a fuck ton of tubing. I don't know if I can pull this through. Ooh, that's quality. Now that popped right off. So, real quick, this right here popped right out, which is okay. It's not a big deal. This is just your collet for your tubing. Um, and actually that helped me because I want to push the tubing back farther down, but we're going to have to epoxy that in and make it a little bit better. So we're going to give ourselves a little bit more room and we're going to inlet here like that. And then we're going to put another tube across. I'm going to use, this is their outlet. That's not going to be long enough. Just disconnect all this shit. I don't fucking need it. Ah, they didn't set it up right anyway. So we're going to take our next longest tube, which is going to be this guy. We're going to hook it back into our wall out. This is where the wall escapes through the side of the hull. Maybe. Helps if you do this. Put a little spit in there. It's like when you're putting the grips on your handlebars and you're a kid. Okay, same thing. Soapy water works. Okay. And that's not going to be long enough either. I was just trying to keep the same diameter of tubing. Ah, you bitch. That needs to be up here. So I have a bunch of other tubing. Let me go ahead and um, 
tube that up because I've got a whole roll here. I've got a whole desk full of this shit. So be right back. All right, well, I'm gonna have to mount it to this plate after all because the outlet in the side of the boat that they used has a big ass filler on it. So it's like, eh, couldn't get my other tube over it. So that's okay, we're just gonna put it right here. Not the end of the world, okay? Easy enough. So we're gonna put this here. That'll reach just fine, like that. I did put zip strips around that, just to make everything a little bit of an extra insurance policy. Then we're gonna take a tube and connect this end of the ESC over to that end of the ESC. So we make a loop, otherwise your boat will fill up with water and you'll sink. That's not good, okay? There we go. Take a couple more baby zip strips. Do you have to do this? The zip strip bit? Nah, probably not. But again, it's just extra insurance. I would much rather the motor get hot than the ESC. The motor's gonna handle and displace heat way better than this ESC is. But these are good ESCs. This is the same ESC that I'm running in the UL19 Hydro. Uh, it's very cheap. I think they're 60 bucks and they seem to work really well. So, yeah, good stuff. Next thing we're gonna do before we get all crazy mounting with this is we're going to mount, how do I do this? This is all this stuff I'm doing is much easier to do before you mount it in the boat. <laughs> I've learned that lesson, okay? Soldering it and all that stuff. Soldering those heavy cables inside the hull is a pain in the ass. So, next thing we're gonna do is put our fancy dancy fan assembly on there. So we're gonna peel off. Do you, you don't really need this, but I plan on goose, I run full speed a lot. Um, so, yeah, yeah. again, more insurance. Uh, you're also going to be circulating hot air around it. <laughs> it's not like it's an air conditioner, right? Um, but it is gonna help, okay? And that's forever, that sucker stand. Look at that, that thing's cool. Look at that, Jasonified monster shit. All right, there we go. Now, where do we wanna mount our cat pack? I think we're just gonna mount it off to the side because it's really the only place. Um, or we can mount it there. Kinda cool, yeah, let's mount it there. Nothing but peanut kids. So oh, there's something else I was gonna say now. I can't remember what it was. No, oh, good enough. All right, let's wipe that off a little bit. Okay. All right. Now we're just gonna stick that, and that'll draw some air over these caps too. But they shouldn't be getting too hot. I'm not worried about that. This heat shrink, it doesn't like to stick. Okay. So then we're going to mount our ESC. This double-sided tape works really good in the water. It, I've gotten my UL Hydro pretty much completely soaked inside. Oh, definitely soaked. I've had a lot of water in that thing. And uh, no issues whatsoever. Make sure that's on there good and tight. That ain't gonna pop off anytime soon, I don't think. All right, cool. So there we go, look at that monstrosity. Pretty cool. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut two pieces of tape, stick it on the ESC and mount it. You don't need to see that on camera. However, the one trick that I do do is I will take a razor blade and scar this plastic up a little bit. And same thing with this. There we go. And that actually gives the glue in the tape a little bit more adhesion to the surface. And bam, it'll be great. So let me do that real quick, be right back. All right, so here we go. Everything is strapped in, water lines are run. I need to epoxy that back in. Um, everything's nice. I did run the water lines through this uh, motor bracket a little bit just to kind of keep things nice and neat it's not kinked it'll be all right um if you want you can blow in one end no water leaks at all good now one of the problems i found already is that these motor connectors will not fit these esc connectors look at that 
that's not so good. So what we're going to do, I cut one of those banana plugs off. Because these suck anyway for transferring current. They get hot because there's, let me zoom in. You see how they're banded, all right? It's not a great solid connection. So what I'm gonna do, this one I butchered. I cut this little bit off, slid this off and cut the post. I'm gonna do that with all of them and I'm gonna hard solder them into the motors, which is fine. The only problem with that theory now is the fact that you have to Make sure the motor direction is going the right way first before <laughs> you solder the shit up. We want to be going counterclockwise. So we will go ahead and test that theory here in a second. Um, I'm going to trim these off. It's very simple to do. Let's cut the little ball off the top. Ah. Slide off this little banded dude and then cut down here as well and then we cut off the heat shrink, okay? So I'm gonna do that, and I'm also gonna set up the radio so we can plug this thing in because we've gotta be able to squeeze it to see which way we're going. So let me do that, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. I have one battery hooked up, one is not, and I did that just to um, get the receiver bound and all that good stuff. So what we're gonna do now that's all ready to go. We just, the ESC does have a back in it, thank God. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hook these up in any order. And we're gonna see which way the prop goes when we hit the gas, all right? Let's see what happens. Might be too low voltage. Might have to charge the batteries up because I think that's the low voltage alarm. Oh, that sucks. Let's see, maybe I've got... We'll try these two. No dice. Battery voltage is too low. So I'm gonna have to charge these up in order to do this. So, be right back. Bam, JJ! Hope you like fishing. Bam, JJ! Hey, JJ! Hope you like fishing!